Hello friends, I hope you are feeling well. Today we are about to embark on that marvelous adventure teased a couple episodes ago, probably last month. That is the Billy Porter inspired ball gown for a friend's wedding that is based off of a uh, modifications of a 1940s suit jacket pattern. Now have I ever made any sort of tailoring menswear endeavor? Absolutely not. Is the first time adventuring into a tailoring menswear endeavor a good idea to have it as such an important piece that is a ball gown that that's probably a bad idea too but we're doing it anyways we are nothing if not confident on this channel so this is the billy porter tuxedo dress that inspired the endeavor um it's, it's actually a romper when i looked at the pictures it is a romper suit with a large overskirt. As you can see, this dress is a whole experience and we're going to need to make this into a multi-part series. Today's episode, part one, we are going to take a 1940s suit pattern uh, for a suit jacket and we are going to turn it into a long pencil dress. Uh, think this Pattern. I think this is a 50s pattern, but we're using 40s suit jacket pattern, but smush the two together to get the vibes right. Don't you think? This Etsy link is listed down below. All my weekend plans got canceled because I have shingles. Uh, so we're going to try to get as far as we can with this dress. I have kind of like a somewhat game plan I have uh, of how I want to tackle this dress written out. That's my kind of pre-planning process. So here are all the pieces that I'm going to need to cut out of which fabric. I then have all my steps listed out. So darts, back, lining, uh, front, attach, interfacing. I have the uh, bit of the, the number pieces uh, that they correspond to that I'm attaching interface three to front two. Uh, wilt pockets and pocket flaps I'm gonna do and I have written that I think I can get here in one day granted that I, I wrote that before I got shingles and I'm having to take uh, some rest and sight breaks because I'm I'm only getting about uh, 30 minutes to an hour without needing to lay down for a little bit and take care of that okay so this is my fabric uh, it's got some slubbies on it and I want the slubbies to go vertically as a design element for height and uh, elongation and I just I, I don't want the slubbies going horizontally I would rather them go vertically however uh, this is only 45 inches so basically I'm going to make the jacket have a waist seam instead of being continuous this is going to be a process and I'm going in half blind but first I'm going to iron that, that seems like something I can do. All right, we do have a scrap bit cut off and it is time to play Mysterious Goodwill Fabric Burn Test. Let's go. Taking a little bit. It is burning. It does burn. Yep, that extinguishes pretty uh, quickly. Gives a white or gray smoke and a little bit of glow afterwards. Does smell kind of like paper. So you get like that like flakiness, but uh, it's not like a beadiness that's coming off of it. It's kind of ashy. Definitely not wool because the uh, smoke is not dark. So we are staying up in the natural plant fibers probably. Let me know if I am completely off base and what you think down in the comments below, what material you think that we are making this dress out of. The benefit to working with uh, thrifted and scraps is that it does come cheap and you sometimes get pleasant surprises. This however is an unpleasant surprise. Since I have random jaggedy cutouts, we're going to have to go out and buy something. So that is a frustration, but a frustration we will deal with. I got my interfacing, the Stephanie interfacing cut out for the front but not the collar so I need to do the collar <sighs> but right now I feel like I am cutting onions with one eye it is so irritated I'm gonna have to take another seeing break so uh, it is a new day this is the current uh, shingles state right here 
Uh, and we have discovered that holding a frozen banana is really a great shape for uh, soothing any eye-related uh, irritants. It, it, it's just it's just really working out right now. And you get a, a, a lovely uh, protein smoothie afterwards, so that that's all working out. We still have not gotten to the red line of I think I can get here in one day, um, but being as we're shingles face and needing to take breaks where that, that plane is out the window. I have created pocket flaps. I haven't cut out the pocket for it yet. Uh, I think that I'm probably going to use the original hip pocket. Uh, right now I am marking my darts uh, and then I will attach the interfacing to the front and then we are going to work on that pocket. I am doing that chronic illness thing again where like I want to continue but I'm fighting my body and I'm just exhausted. So, I mean, I'm ironing down the interfacing, but I, I don't think I'm gonna get much farther than that today. I wanted to get the pockets on. This is the max amount of energy that I can spend right now and I can barely keep my eye open for it. Mm -hmm. And for some reason I'm exhibiting a lot of vocal fry. Eh. <laughs> you did it. I did it. <laughs> did you switch crafts? Yes. I can do this one while lying down. <laughs> sad puppy. Sad puppy. I am a sad puppy. He's not, though. He's not. He's a very good boy. He's a crafty boy. He likes knitting and crocheting with me. So it is uh, not the next weekend, but the weekend after that. When I started finally feeling a little bit less shingly, my husband brought home a stomach virus and I'm still not over that one. But in the meantime, between being contagious, I went to Joann's and got some uh, polyester lining fabric. A lot of the whites that they had were a cool white, but they looked cheap until I found this guy who kind of has a little bit of kind of like a crush texture to it, which since we're doing the velvet accents, I think it works really well. So we're going to see if we can get through the welt pocket step today. So this is the welt pocket and honestly this is not so bad. Unfortunately it is the prettier of the two. Also unfortunately it's like the exact size of the pocket flaps that I made. So in order for the pocket flaps to fully cover it, I need to make new pocket flaps. It's frustrating, but we're gonna get a better result from it. It's gonna be okay. Hello again, and I have completely lost track on what day I'm actually doing this. Uh, these original pocket flaps that I did, beautiful, perfection, slightly. Too small. I redid these pocket flaps uh, with the lining fabric as the backing. While this is a very white pocket flap, it is a very flimsy pocket flap. So my third attempt at the pocket flaps is going to be my last attempt, uh, and hopefully this one will be perfection. Behold the back attached at the shoulders and sides. Uh, doing pretty good about that. Now we need to interface the under collar. Actually we don't because I have already interfaced the under collar. We need to attach the under collar to the jacket, then join the upper collar to the neck of the front facing. And after that is attached to the upper collar, then I join to outside of blazer, right sides together, turn right side out. Okay. It appears that I have one little step, one frustrating li little step, and then attaching it all together, and which is going to be a very big step. Everything ironed down to the best of my ability, which was, albeit not great, but here's the lining. It is roughly pinned in place, and uh, I am too much of a chicken to sew it by machine, so I'm gonna try to get a needle and thread and hand sew that sucker, and I have a few hours to do so. That is Erwin, though, and uh, you might 
here from his little booths of anger. He is being very clingy today. Hi, my sweet boy. Do you want a pet? You want a pet? I will be right out with the dress to hand sew it and we can chill next to each other. Hi, Bear. Would you like a pet too? Okay. Uh, this has been your pug interlude. Bro, it took me like 30 minutes just to get the sleeves on the inside pinned in. This is going to be a freaking ordeal. So about following directions on the pattern. I don't like the directions on the pattern. It, it has you construct the outer, the inner, and get them all attached in place and then put the sleeves on. It is just difficult to um, maneuver the sleeves into place while everything else is already sewn intact in place. I think that you should add the sleeves before attaching the lining to the outer bit of the garment. We have the mannequin on the table. So right now I'm just whip stitching the lining in place. This is the back. I did also uh, tack this down in place. This is where the opening for the back slit is. It, it does a little bit crossover thing and kind of like mermaid flops down ever so elegantly. Once again, slit in the back to allow for ease of movement. I just kind of hand stitched everything in place, like ironed it into place, hand stitched it down to where it needed to go. And I don't even think that I have a process for that that I can articulate. It's just look at pencil skirt, look at this, figure out how it needs to look like the pencil skirt type of deal. Well, I tried to go to Joanne's today for the buttons um, and they were closed due to a power outage. Um, I, I feel like that's, you know, a sign from the universe as much as any that uh, this is where we stop the video and have the rest of the dress modifications in a part two. So part two of the video is probably going to be buttons, button holes, hemming, um, and maybe getting the overskirt drafted, like a, a, a partial draft of the overskirt. And if everything goes as planned, part three will be um, the final touches on the overskirt, including the hemming and uh, getting the poofage of the overskirt installed because let's face it the overskirt is going to need some poofage because this process was taking over a month just working on it intermittently and with varying stages of grogginess and brain fog once again i was dealing with shingles i was dealing with the stomach bug i was dealing with the respiratory infection and allergies it was a whole ordeal um but I got the white velvet at Goodwill. I didn't even use half of it. I still have a significant amount left over. If you have any ideas what you want to, me to use a uh, white non-stretch velvet for, feel free to let me know down in the comments. But for materials, I'm gonna say that's $4 right there. The instructions call for an interfacing that is pad stitched in since we have technology, we have single-sided iron-on interfacing. I used that. So $3 from the remnant section minus 50%. We used $150 worth of interfacing. Now you may ask this big giant roll of slightly minty, beautiful, shiny green fabric. How much did that cost? I got in the entire roll at Goodwill for $5. I still have so much left to make this outer skirt with. I bought two spools of thread, so let's say I'm, I'm spending $15 in materials for this because it is so significantly secondhand and reduced. For context, my upcoming Barbie project was $40 worth of fabric alone. So what do you think about my process so far, and are you excited to see parts two and three of this making an extravagant ball gown-ish series, uh, let me know down below in the comments with the any questions, comments, or concerns. I know that I took an extremely long hiatus, but new videos should be up on Fridays, not every Friday though. So if you liked this video and wanna see more in the series, be sure to like this video and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you know when I actually do post it. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. Stay happy, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Penny, is this your room now? Are you just gonna nap in here forever? Whoa, where are you going? Oh, you gotta watch the birds. You watch those birds. <laughs>